Are you in need of a change order form template? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because in today's video, I am going to be showing you step-by-step step exactly how to create one from scratch, along with all of the information that you are going to want to capture in this important document. Now, if you are short of time, I have made a pre-built, pre-formatted change order form template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you do want to pick that up. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this document yourself from scratch. So the first thing that I'm going to recommend that you do is click insert at the top and then we're going to open up the header area. Now let's go with banded for now. Bear in mind some of this formatting you may want to change depending on your preferences or perhaps even your organization's branding and colors. So let's just call this change order form template for now. And what I'm gonna do here is in the shape format, I'm just going to change this to uh, gray, considering this is a nice professional color. And I'm also gonna put an outline on as well. By adding this header, every time we create a new page, this is going to format the top. I'm actually going to bold this out as well. So we have this now in place. Now I'm gonna walk you through all of the different content areas to create and exactly how you can do this in the best and minimal time possible. So firstly, a lot of this template is gonna be built using this functionality. So insert table, and we're gonna be setting up some formatting that we can leverage going forward. Now the first content area that I'd re recommend that you add to your template is just somewhere to put some key information about the project. So for this, we are going to need a two by three, and this is what we're going to want to capture here. So the project name, the project manager, and also the location of work. Now, what we're gonna to want to do at this particular moment in time, click the home ribbon, I'm going to bold this, and I'm gonna give this a nice light gray background. Now, if I just move this over here, so I'm hovering here, so you can see this, left click and drag across. This is the content area where that information would go. Now, what you can do, it makes sense to have just kind of one line here, we're not gonna need much information, but if you did want to indicate that you wanted to capture more information, you could always make that content area bigger by hitting enter on your keyboard. We will be doing that shortly. So that's the first kind of content area going to create. Now the next one is going to be more about the contract or the change order number. So we're just gonna basically give the ability to store that in this document. So what we're gonna need to create here is a um, four by two table. Now in here, we're going to put contract number. We are going to put change order number here. We are going to put the, well, the ability to capture the requesting party and also the ability to store the date of the request. Now, all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit home, bold, hit that gray there and do the same for this. So again, you can see our content area to enter this information is here. Now what we could do if we wanted to, just to make this more visually appealing, is just play around with this here so it all kind of lines up. So you'll see there, it just looks a bit more professional and neat. Now the next thing I wanna recommend that you do is just store somewhere for the project details essentially. So what I'm gonna do here is just bold this, we'll leave that as, uh, we'll put that to 14. And then here, I'm gonna press enter, insert, table and we're just going to do a one by one and a couple of entry enters on the keyboard just to make this bigger here basically you just want to put a brief description of the project now what i'm going to do here is make this unbolded i'm also going to make this down to about uh 10 and i'm going to indent it as well that's more just a, a placeholder for that content it gives an idea and the anyone who's entering information into this document an idea of what's to be included in that content area. So what I'm gonna now do is I'm just gonna copy this. So I selected all of that, I press Control C on my keyboard, Control V, that's basically copy and paste. If you're using a Mac, it might be slightly different, the uh, shortcut you need. Nevertheless, what we're gonna put here is the project change request. Um, just, we'll call this description, but this is we could put this overview actually. Let's call this overview. Now, 
again, we want this to be in line, so that's a font size 14. Now here, what we're going to want to do is insert table, and we're going to look for a six by two, uh, a two by six, I should say. So like this. Now, these are the content areas I'd recommend that you include. So somewhere to put a description of the changes needed. Somewhere to specify the reason for change. You want to also document the support and justification for the change. The ability to talk about the specifications, the impact of the change, and also it's also useful to include something about the risk of that change. Is there, is there a risk to it? And what's the risk management overview for it? So what I'm gonna now do is select all of this. I'm going to hit, well, it's already bolded. Put that gray fill. I'm gonna put this down to 12 to match the rest of this. Now I'm gonna go in here and press enter a couple of times. So one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And that's given us a nice content area to enter this information into. Now, what we're gonna enter, we're gonna go on to the next page for this bit. And we basically want to enter some information about a change in any contract price or contract time. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna recommend that you do is click insert, and this will enable us to put tables side by side. So we're gonna click insert, and we're going to select text box. We're gonna do a simple one for now. Now what I'm gonna do is we can play around with the formatting, but I am gonna make it about this size, okay? Now I'm gonna remove this, and I'm gonna go, while I'm in the text box, insert, table, and we're gonna do a two by four, okay? Now in here, we're gonna put original price, because we we're going to want to document that. We're gonna to want to put the net changes of previous change orders. We're going to want to put uh, the net increase or decrease. And we're also going to want to put in here the total contract price with approved changes. Now, one thing I forgot to do, so I'm gonna do this now, is I'm gonna select Select. I selected here and pressed enter to go here. What we're gonna to want to put in here is a heading for this section. So changing contract price. Now this needs to be bolded and at font size 14. Now I'm gonna make this text box a bit bigger like this. I'm also going to bold these, put the light gray on and at the bottom one, I'm going to put this as a slightly darker gray, okay? just to indicate that this is the kind of high level summary. Actually, what we could do, something that's even better, is let's put this all as this lightest one, and then we'll put this one as that one like that. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I'm gonna left click on here, right click, and on the outline, we are going to put no outline because we don't want that to appear. Now, if we select that content area again and press Control C, and then left click next to it and press Control V, you'll see that we've basically created this. It's, it's enabled us to put the, the tables side by side. So all we want to do now is change this over. So this is about price, this is about times. So yeah, this is more yeah about cost and this is more about schedule. So we want original, so we just need to go in basically and update this text. So original times, we want the net changes of previous change orders in days. We then want a net increase or decrease, and then we want the total contract time with approved changes. So now we've got this content area here, which is looking good. Now what I'd recommend that you do is, an, is add another table here. So insert table, we want a two by two, and we want to add the ability to document the change request priority level, and also the change request priority justification. In other words, why are we giving it this classification? We're gonna keep the, everything uniform. Let's put this down here and put that gray on and just make sure everything's kind of in line. So you might want to, as an example, go here and just kind of bring this across. And we might want to, as an example, just 
just move this out so it's all uniform. That's gone a bit, I want to press Control Z to go back there. But you get the idea, what I'm trying to do is line everything up so it looks really professional and neat. So we have that. Now we want to add the ability to document the project change order discussion and documentation. In other words, I spelled those, that one incorrectly. In other words, we just want to pretty much talk about who's kind of approving things, who is working on this. So to do this, I'd recommend clicking on insert table. We're going to do a four by, uh, what do we need? One, two, three, four by five for now. We can always change this, but let's do a four by five and we're going to put name and title. I'm going to hit home. I'm going to put this down to 12, put that gray on. We're going to have, leave this as is. Actually, we're going to select all of these and put that gray on. We're going to leave that as is. We're going to want this to be name and title as well. I could have copied and pasted that across. This again. So the other thing you can do is kind of create this and press home format painter and just do that. That kind of works quite well. And we're going to want somewhere to document the date. So again, this should do the format painter. Oh, I didn't select all of that. There we go. Keep that all uniform. And then here, in here, we're just going to put by. So, so it would be something like John, the project manager, by, and then who it's run, who they've run it by, essentially. So you put that in the middle like that. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. Just put those center as well. We don't need all those bolded. So there we go. And then the the other couple of tables we're going to include here is we're going to need an we're going to need a four by four. Now we need somewhere to document who recommended the change. So we're going to put this down to a twelve and a grey here. The date we're going to put accepted or who accepted the change and a date of that. We also want to talk about who approved, the date it was approved. So I should probably do that actually, just for, just for clarity, reviewed by and then date. And then what we're going to do here is just keep this all uniform like this. this 12, get that gray on, get that gray on. Now the other thing we could do actually is put this in a lighter gray. Just because then it looks like it's um, associated with the above field, if that makes sense. So there's that little content area here. And then the last one I'd recommend that you include is somewhere to put notes or additional comments. And to do that, let's insert this table, it's one by one, and make that all the way down to the bottom. So that is a change order form template that you can use and leverage across all of your projects. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback about this particular template, drop them down below. As I say, there's also a, a link in the description if you did want to pick this up and not have to kind of follow along and create this. With that said, best of luck over to you, and I hope you have an excellent day.